You think you know E.T. the extraterrestrial? Well, here's some things you may not have known about the little alien that just wanted to phone home. It's working! Oh. You did it! It's working! The story of E.T. was inspired by the imaginary friend of director Steven Spielberg as a child. Originally, he envisioned the story to be a horror movie about aliens invading a family's home. However, while filming Raiders of the Lost Ark, he told screenwriter Melissa Matheson about his idea. She ditched the horrifying tale and made it more of a kid-friendly movie. The title at the time was E.T. and Me. The director still managed to keep his original horror idea, but switched the aliens to ghosts and Poltergeist was born. Maybe uh, an elf or a leprechaun. It was nothing like <laughs> Sit down. Henry Thomas, who plays Elliot in the movie, showed up to his audition wearing an Indiana Jones costume. During his audition, Spielberg asked the young fan to improvise a scene where the government is taking E.T. away. You can't take him away, he's mine! But it's not my choice. The president asked me to come here and get him. I don't care what the president says, he's my best friend! Thomas stated that he thought about his dead dog, which helped him cry during the audition and ultimately won him the role. Okay, kid, you got the job. <laughs> <laughs> the famous bike scene was pulled off with minimal use of special effects. Dennis Mirren and his team from ILM spent weeks searching for a location where there was a low-hanging moon and treetops. By using lunar charts, they figured out a specific date in which the moon would be at its lowest. Once they captured the perfect sky, the team added the silhouettes of Elliot and E.T. in post-production. Drew Barrymore's ability to come up with clever lies allowed her to be cast as Gertie. Originally auditioning for Poltergeist, the six-year-old told Steven Spielberg that she wasn't an actress. Instead, she was a drummer in a punk rock group called the Purple People Eaters. Her made-up band played for sold-out arenas while wearing face paint. Spielberg noticed her vivid imagination and soon cast her in E.T. 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 phone home. Mm. E.T. phone home. E.T. phone home. He wants to call somebody. A professional mime was responsible for E.T.'s hand movements. If the alien puppet picked up something during the scene or interacted with Elliot, professional mime Caprice Roth would create the hand movements. By laying horizontally on the ground, she would wear sleeve-length gloves that mimicked E.T.'s skin and would extend her hand vertically under the puppet. Since E.T. only had four fingers, Roth's ring and pinky finger wound up being smushed together in the fourth digit. If you look at the end credits in the film, her name is credited as E.T. Movement Coordinator. Ouch. Oh, stop that. Ouch. No, don't. Ouch. Ouch. It's a fake knife. Ouch. Fake. Ouch. Steven Spielberg was the first voice of E.T. He would deliver the dialogue off screen in order to get his actors to connect better with the alien. Legendary sound designer Ben Burt found the final voice of the character in post. While at a local camera store, he heard the deep, raspy voice of Pat Welsh, a longtime smoker. By keeping the sound of her voice and mixing it with various other sounds of animals breathing, he was able to get the basic voice of E.T. Welsh was paid $380 for the role, but wasn't the only contributing voice actor. Over 18 different people helped to voice E.T., including a burp from Ben Burt's professor from film school and audio of his wife sleeping while she had a cold. Harrison Ford was originally supposed to appear in the film. The actor played the principal at Elliot's school. However, his scenes in the movie were ultimately cut for time. I'm Elliot's mother. Of course you are. Don't you worry about a thing. Elliot and I have had our little talk, and I think we know where we're coming from. I think the best thing to do is to go home for the rest of the day and think about what's happened here today and tomorrow. Well, Everyone knows that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg are BFFs and often make references to each other's movies in their own films. In E.T. during Halloween, one of the children is dressed up as Yoda. Lucas had no idea about the cameo until he first saw the film at a personal screening at Skywalker Ranch. Lucas loved the homage and made sure to add E.T.'s race of aliens into The Phantom Menace. And here's a bonus one. Filmmakers originally wanted to use M&Ms as the candy that E.T. was infatuated with. However, the Mars Company, which owns M&M, didn't permit their candy to be used in the movie. So, the filmmakers approached Hershey with their idea. Hershey allowed for their candy to be used in the film and made a deal for E.T. to appear in their commercials. Once the movie became a smash hit, Reese's Pieces sales skyrocketed.
That's it for this episode of You Think You Know Movies. Make sure to subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get the latest movie and TV news on ScreenCrush.com.